Yes, you read the title right. But before you comment, Mike Menzer was right. Yes, Mike Menzer was right. Sounds like Mike Menzer was right once again. Yes, Mike Menzer was right again, huh? And Mike Menzer was right. Wait until the end of the video to hear about the latest meta-analysis on the relationship between training volume and muscle gains. Legitimately, the most comprehensive volume meta that just dropped very recently, and it is honestly one of the best papers I have seen when it comes to muscle growth and strength research. Yeah, that sounded like an ad for the paper, but hey. The data-driven strength team, led by Josh Pelland, essentially looked at the relationship between training volume and muscle gains, aka muscle growth and strength. Is more volume actually more muscle growth? Have the previous metas been wrong? Is there a volume conspiracy? What about strength? Should you be doing three sets a week, five sets, 300 sets a week? Let's find out. However, if you've ever watched any of my videos or at least some of my videos, you likely know that I am no stranger to the literature on volume and muscle gains. My PhD was on the minimum effective training dose for strength in powerlifters and I have been yapping about the power of low volume training for a hot minute. I have even released a few free minimum dose strength and hypertrophy templates, which you can find in the description below. And you can use until MyAdapt launches. Sign up to get notified when it launches at myadapt.com. Low volume propaganda aside, I have also talked about how more volume will likely lead to more gains, especially for hypertrophy and less over strength. I've referenced the classic meta-analysis by Sean Pelletal, shout out to Brad Schoenfeld, quite a few times in videos, and I have claimed that, hey, a little bit can get you a long way, but for maximum gains, it seems like doing more will likely get you more gains. In the past couple of years, we've seen more research come out looking at crazy high volumes and still observing at least some benefit for muscle growth, even with volumes as high as 52 sets for a single muscle group, per week triggered, AKA around 37 sets on average from that study, don't eat me alive. But even before these crazy high volume studies that people hated because they hate science advancing, historically speaking in our echo chamber, there's been drama around volume and hypertrophy and the relationship between volume and hypertrophy with some questioning the previously published metas, the quality of the studies included in them and in general acting as if there may be a volume conspiracy. Aside from just the troll comments though, even other academics, other researchers in the literature have legitimately questioned whether there is actually a dose response relationship between volume and hypertrophy. So yeah, up until the release of this meta, we had some previously published meta analysis that showed that, hey, there is a dose response relationship between volume and hypertrophy. However, many were questioning even the authors and the people involved in the studies. And in general, it seemed like you were either in one hypothetical camp, which was the low to moderate volumes are best and everything else is just muscle swelling or like it's a waste of time. And you were, you know, unless you're training like a pussy, you're not gonna actually be able to do those training volumes. And then obviously you had the supposed high volume camp that was telling people, hey, do 300 sets per week, no matter what, which nobody was actually doing. I've spoken about this at length before, although it doesn't matter, but nobody was actually recommending crazy high volumes, no matter your circumstances or for all muscle groups simultaneously. So that's where we were before this meta was published or at least pre-printed. And before we jump into the findings of this super comprehensive volume meta, let's hear the lead author himself, doctoral candidate, Josh Pelland, a very handsome guy, talk about how this meta differs methodologically from previous metas, at least as far as the hypertrophy side of things goes. There is a dose response relationship between hypertrophy, between volume and hypertrophy, and previous meta analytic data had somewhat identified that, but there have been doubts uh, casted upon um, that relationship and more specifically some of the studies included in those meta analyses as, for example, the latest one before yours, I had only included, I think, six studies um, that meet their met their inclusion criteria. How many studies did you guys include and how did your approach at including studies differ uh, from what we have currently seen on the topic? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, and it's an important question because that is a limitation just of exercise science research in general. We're not dealing with a massive amount of data. And we are very aware of that limitation in general, and also with the previous meta-analyses by Schoenfeld and Basval. Both of those analyses, fantastic papers, fantastic authors, respectively, on, on both group, uh, 
for both papers. Um, but since the publication of those studies, or since the publication of those analyses, additional studies have come out. Um, and we also wanted to look to improve our power in another way. So what we did is we also included frequency studies because that'll also be in the manuscript as a meta-analysis on the effects of frequency. And when you're doing a meta-regression, what you're really doing is you're looking at the effects within a study because I really can't compare you know, a study at Lehman College versus a study at Florida Atlantic University. You really can't make those between study comparisons, okay? Um, so what we did is we included frequency studies as well and then we analyzed to see if there was a consistent effective frequency. And spoiler alert here, there wasn't a, a strong, consistent, effective frequency. So what we were able to do is we were also able to include the frequency studies in the meta regression to uh, improve our precision, improve our estimates for the effect size at each set count. And that's a long way of saying we used all of the up-to-date research and we also kind of cast it a slightly wider net to ultimately get 34 studies in our model for hypertrophy and 66 studies in our model for strength, which is considerably more than some of the previous analyses. And in addition to that, we looked at a lot of different models in our statistical analysis. Schoenfeld in 2017, fantastic paper, landmark paper, but a limitation is that they only looked at a linear relationship to my knowledge. So in other words, they looked at the dose response relationship, fit a linear relationship and said, Hey, is this significant? And the answer was yes. But what we're able to do is we're able to kind of take additional studies and also say, Hey, is linear best, or is it more of this curve of linear relationship, which is what we found, which indicates diminishing returns. And our model could have also shown that it was an inverted U, or it could have shown that there was a plateau, right? Our models were able to better understand the nature of the relationship with a lot more studies. A beast of a project, if you ask me. And to nobody's surprise, at least IMO, the authors found that there is a dose-response relationship between volume and hypertrophy with as it stands, no clear plateau in sight, and with even volumes as high as 30 to 40 sets per muscle group per week, still leading to more muscle growth. That said, and this is an important note, the authors quantified volume as fractional sets, meaning that if you were to experiment and actually try and push some muscle groups to extremely high volumes, you'd also count in direct sets at as half a set. For example, if you wanted to do 30 sets for your biceps, that would require you to either do like 20 direct sets of bicep work and also count 20 sets of your back work for biceps as well and then have like a total of 30 sets or whatever. However, before you absolutely lose your mind and start slamming your keyboard, the authors highlighted that there is greater uncertainty as it pertains to the high volume results given the limited available literature and that there are clear diminishing returns as you go higher and higher in training volume. We'll hear about the minimum effective dose for both strength and hypertrophy from the lead author, Josh Pellin himself. But before we do that, let's have a closer look at the results as it pertains to higher volumes for both strength and hypertrophy. So for hypertrophy, as I mentioned, more volume equals more growth with no clear plateau in sight. So after minimum dose though, as weekly sets increase, the higher efficiency set range is somewhere around five to 10 sets, which requires you to perform six additional sets from minimum dose, spoiler alert, in order to make further detectable and meaningful gains. Intermediate efficiency is somewhere around the 11 to 18 set mark, which means that you need another around 8.5 sets to see additional meaningful hypertrophy. While when you go even higher, as uh, far as training volume goes, so in the 19 to 29 set mark, you need about another 10.75 sets in order to see actually meaningful gains. Beyond 30 sets, efficiency declines even more with the lowest efficiency being somewhere around the 30 to 42 set mark, uh, which demands 12.5 additional sets to be performed for you to see meaningful hypertrophy gains, measurable hypertrophy gains. So yeah, more is more, but terms and conditions definitely apply. But what about that sweet minimum effective dose you ask? Calling Josh Pellin to tell us, woo. So put simply, around four sets per week per muscle, we feel pretty confident that most individuals will see uh, meaningful hypertrophy. 
Nice. Nice. That's that's super interesting. And I should uh, probably about... clarify. I should probably clarify really quick that that is fractional sets. Mm -hmm. So again, fractional sets is when you're counting indirect sets as half of a set. So you could get to four fractional sets by doing, you could get to four fractional sets for your triceps by doing eight sets of bench press, or just by doing four sets of tricep extensions, or by doing two sets of tricep extensions and uh, four sets of bench press. Pretty sweet, am I right? You can hit four fractional sets per muscle group per week and still see noticeable gains with five to 10 fractional sets, which in my opinion is still pretty low volume and pretty manageable. That can get you great gains as well. So even if you're time constrained or, or can't be asked to train for long periods of time, you can literally just do something and still not just maintain, as some would have you think, but still continue to make progress. But enough about muscle growth. Let's briefly talk about strength. Now, again, above minimum dose, higher efficiency occurs with just two sets per week. So you may ask what the hell is minimum dose then here? One set per week, maybe, uh, requiring approximately 0.7 additional sets for you to still see further strength improvements. Intermediate efficiency are, is around three to four sets, which requires two plus sets to see additional meaningful strength gains and the lowest efficiency starts at around five sets or more per week where additional sets do not seem to consistently enhance strength beyond a certain threshold so yeah strength enthusiasts right now are clapping and celebrating bro like we're talking about great games with very low volumes but let's also hear what joss has to say calling joss pelland again sorry for this two calls back to back bro i think this is really really encouraging for a lot of people looking for time efficient ways to get stronger um, so in fact, as soon as you went from zero sets, so no training to one set per week, the estimated effect was well above that smallest effect size of interest. So in other words, the minimum effective dose for strength from our analysis was just one set per week for strength. Now, does that apply to your powerlifter that's been training consistently and competing for 20 years? Yes. Probably not. Maybe. Uh, Honestly, for some folks, it might. But um, in the samples investigated here, right, some untrained cohorts, some moderately trained cohorts, there are definitely some cohorts that, you know, were, were power lifters or very well trained folks. Um, but I think the main conceptual takeaway here is that in the short term, you can definitely get stronger from very little training, as little as one set per week. Oh, wow, that's so cool, Joss. This is my organic reaction to something that was totally not recorded a few months ago. Super cool, strength, minimum dose. But hey, that said, our studies on powerlifters, which weren't included in their meta, um, and looked at the minimum effective training dose in actual trained lifters, found that even in those trained lifters, somewhere around three to six relatively heavy sets per week per lift, can lead to substantial gains in strength. And here, we're not talking about just strong individuals for literature standards, we're talking about power lifters that are specifically training for strength, which is also pretty sweet. Overall though, and because I know most of you aren't rushing to read the full text or even watch the awesome five hour episode the guys did on the results and the methodology of this meta, here's an overview of some of the terms and conditions that you must keep in mind when viewing these results. Josh! In true nature of the Dr. Pack channel, all of this is, is saying, hey, this is the data we have. This is the best way we think we can analyze it. Let's see what it tells us. This is not saying, hey, this is how you need to train. This is the minimum effective dose that's set in stone and is never going to change. This is beyond critique. This is just saying, hey, as a scientist, we extracted all the data we have. We tried to look at it in the most robust way we can do with this what you wish if you disagree awesome and there could be you know limitations that are are you know present here that change practice for someone and that's totally fine but this is what the data shows and we're representing that data to the best of our ability and there you have it if you want to absolutely maximize muscle growth or at least take a stab at doing so. Doing more volume, which doesn't mean all the volume, just doing more is likely a good idea, but you do not need to have an all or nothing approach. It could be that you do 
a bit more volume for your side delts and you keep everything else at the 10 to 15 set mark. It may mean that if you have a body part that is really solid, you do minimum dose for that. You literally do like four to five sets per week for that body part and then blast that other body part with more volume. Do not lose your mind. Like just because more is more, that should not be viewed in the way that people make you believe that it should be viewed. From a strength standpoint, make sure you're lifting heavy, not super close to failure all the time and even a few sets will do solid by you. Life is good, people. Gains for everyone. Stop crying. It's really a good time. But that aside, outro time. Josh, my brother, please outsourcing this to you. Take it away. Don't forget to mention Dr. Pack for 10% off Rascal Apparel and for people to sign up to myadapt.com for the best app to date. Peace. Coming away from this analysis, really optimistic for both folks that want to get a lot out of a little, because we've demonstrated that you can get a lot out of a little, but I've also come away from this optimistic for the maximalists because it does show that we, volume is a lever. You can pull strategically if you want to squeeze out every last bit of muscle growth you can. That's awesome.